Welcome to Superpower Reviews. My name is Liam Smith. Today we're going to be reviewing Lucifer, Wings of the Fallen. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the box. This one is a fairly simple box, just a plain white box. It has the Lucifer feather on the front, Wings of the Fallen. Okay, and after removing the outer sleeve, we have the inner sleeve, which basically just says Lucifer at the top, Wings of the Fallen in the middle. The rest is in Chinese. After removing the inner sleeve, there's an image of the figure itself fully assembled. On the back side, we have the full instructions on how to apply all the accessories to the figure. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and lay out all the individual accessories that come in the kit and we'll go over them one by one. Okay, so I have all the individual parts laid out here on the table next to the instructions on how to apply them to the figure. First, I'm gonna go over all the individual parts. Then I will assemble them onto the TB League figure. The body that's recommended for this accessory set is the TB League or Fison S23B. The reason for that is the skin tone on that TB League body matches this head sculpt perfectly, as well as the body is sized exactly where it needs to be to fit all of these accessories properly. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the individual pieces. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. These are the shoes that come with the figure set. Now these are pretty amazing with the detail on them. I know a lot of people were concerned when this was first announced, will it actually look like the renderings, will it look like the concept art? And let me tell you, once we go through this, you'll see that it actually does. I'm very impressed with how this turned out. Now looking a little closer at the shoes or the feet, however you want to look at that, they are in a high heel style it looks like, and they do attach directly to the legs of the figure, just like the feet would on a, on a Fison or a TB League figure, which is what you do use with this accessory set, they pop right on there just like the foot would. Now taking a look at the shin armor, you will see that it is very detailed compared to the original version of this, which was just a straight piece of black plastic going down the lower half of the leg. This is severely upgraded compared to what it was. I know a lot of people were concerned, as I said about the other parts, is it really gonna look like that? Are they really upgrading it to that level? And, and let me tell you, they, they definitely did. Okay, moving on to the upper armor on the leg. I don't know if you can hear that thunder we got going on outside there, but I guess that's kind of appropriate considering uh, that this is the Lucifer figure that we're looking at here. Kind of fits the theme. So anyway, we have the leg armor for the top. As you can see, as this spins around, it is highly detailed, just like the rest of it. Let me go ahead and pick this up here and show you the front side. It does have a lot of different layers to the armor, a lot of highly detailed items, such as the rivets that are in what is supposed to be uh, metal armor. The red paint around the trim, it's done very nicely. They paid a lot of attention to detail on this. I'm very impressed with each individual piece, so I'm very excited to see how this is gonna look completely put together on the figure. Okay, and this one here would be a very simple piece, but it's also very highly detailed on the sculpting. This is what they call the female cod piece. You can see the triangular part there with the, the sculpting, the carving around the arrowhead at the top. It is done really well. Okay, now moving on to the piece that fits around the waist of the character. This would be the part that comes around the front of the waist where the spikes are. Again, very highly detailed, the, uh, following the black and red theme with the red pinstripes around the sides. Um, and the claw type theme that follows out throughout the character as well. Okay, now this here would be the breastplate armor. Once again, highly detailed with the very tiny spikes that come around the top. Uh, you can see the string that goes around the back. It is a little bit involved getting these pieces attached. There's a lot of tying and wrapping around involved, which I will uh, show you that shortly. So the next piece will be the spalders, or what is known as the shoulder armor. Now, once again, this is following the same theme. I keep saying that over and over again, but that's because they stuck really well to the theme of this uh, sculpted skull with the wings on it and a gold tone and the red trim. Okay, and there are two small leather type pieces that do wrap around the forearm and the wrist. This top part would go around one of the fingers to hold it in place. 
pretty standard for most of the TB League and, and Fison characters. It covers up that that one and only joint that they that they have really is their hands and their feet, um, with the exception of the neck, which you never really see due to the hair and so on anyway. Okay, moving up to the neck area, this is what I would consider an optional item. This is a, uh, a fur wrap that goes around the neck. I've seen it in some pictures and I've seen it with and without, so it is optional. It is wired so you can shape it however you need to. Uh, so it's something that could be used or you could leave it out depending on how you like the character to look. Okay, the next piece is this metal chain. It is actual metal, has the uh, cuffs with the spikes around the bottom of it. It is a fairly long chain. You can see if I bring this down here, it just continues for a very long time, so it gives it a lot of display options there. Now, this is a piece that was talked about a lot when the new concept first came out. This is the These are the new horns, which are a lot more detailed than the previous ones. If you remember the images from the previous version of this accessory set, they were just a smooth, black, shiny horn. They didn't really look like bone or like horns or anything like, like these do. These look a bit more natural than the previous ones. As a matter of fact, people were saying the other ones looked a lot like worms. To be honest, these kind of look like worms as well. But, you know, once they're on the character, that's going to change. Okay, so this is the piece that everyone's been talking about since this concept was announced. What's going to hold the wings on? These wings span over 30 inches when they're fully extended. So everyone knew that if you just attach it to the back of that small breastplate, or try to hang it around the neck with, with the strings that are on the, the outfit, there's no way that would work. So what they came up with was this very well-engineered neck piece. The way this works is, you can see here, that's where it rests on top of the neck of the character. Head sculpt would come through right here. And then the arms come through, so the shoulders also support that. So you're getting support for the wings on the neck, and the shoulders so all the downward weight is fully supported by the full body of the character now as far as what attaches the wings on people were contemplating it was going to be a magnet or it's going to be a clip-on situation well the way they went was as everybody was guessing at the beginning a large magnet now another nice option they gave here if you decide you don't want to display the wings for any reason and the back of the character is showing as well you're not gonna to wanna to have this large magnet showing. So what they gave you to cover that is a nicely detailed, again, following the theme of the character, uh, plate that will cover the magnet. As you can see, it has two clips in the back that fit into those holes. Just simply clip it in like so. And then that's completely covered if you decide not to use the wings. Now, I do want to mention one more thing. As I was showing this individual piece that holds the wings, I was actually holding it upside down when I was showing it to you. So this is the proper way that it is displayed on the character. Okay, so taking a look at the wings now that we've got them opened up, this is only partially open. They're still folded over a little bit at the top, at the top tier. And they're looking at about 24 inches. I'll show you the exact measurements once it's on the character. These are absolutely massive. And they're two-tiered. There's a tier that bends up here and a tier that bends separately to the bottom so you can shape them in any way that you'd like. Now on the bottom part, this is the most important of course, this is the other half of the magnet. It also has the same clips that the medallion does, that way it has added stability. You don't have to worry about slipping and sliding when you're putting the magnet on. It clips on and gets held on by this very strong magnet which is great to have that double security holding that on. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a very impressive piece that comes with it. This is her sword. As you can see, there's just an amazing amount of sculpting detail in the hilt of the sword, in the handle. You can see the texturing around the handle, the wrap. But right here is what's really impressive. I just love the, the imaging on that. It almost has a demonic look to the hilt of the sword with all the spikes. It is made of a plastic material. I know some of the TB League figures do come with uh, a metal blade on the uh, sword, but this one is completely plastic. Either way, it still looks incredible. Okay, so taking a look at what is being called the base of the figure, it's actually not truly a base because she doesn't stand directly on it as you would consider most bases. This is more just a diorama piece, a larger accessory that comes with it. You can see the lion head sculpted into the uh, stone plate on the front, the dragon head at the top, 
and it does have a unique feature to it. And that unique feature is that the dragon head mouth is actually a holder for the sword. And when you put the sword inside of it, the rocks light up. And the final piece of the puzzle, and always the most important, how is the head sculpt? I have to say, as TB League or Fison always does, they always knock it out of the park, as I say, with their face sculpts. You can see the, the details in here are no different than any of their other characters. If you look at Lady Death or Athena or any of the popular characters that they have out right now, this one is right along the lines with quality of, of that one. Now the hair, some people are torn on that, whether you want to have rooted hair or sculpted hair. The rooted hair can be a little bit harder to manage, but to be honest, it has a more realistic look. Now looking at the face, you can see they did put a lot of detail in it. There is, just like in the concept art, there is the tattoo on the forehead. The, uh, the lips are painted in a black. The eyes have a lot of nice detail to them. And as everyone was saying, as a, and as you can see here, it does have a resemblance to a certain Marvel character that we all know about, Scarlet Witch. Now, whether the resemblance to Scarlet Witch was intentional or not, it, it definitely shows there. Okay, now it is time to go ahead and get this head sculpt and all the accessories onto the figure. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera because putting all of this on there would be a whole separate video in itself.
Okay, now that the figure is fully assembled, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details. I did notice when I was putting the horns into the head sculpt, the holes were a little bit too small. The pegs didn't fit in very well. I had to take a pocket knife and kind of bore them out a little bit. Now it does mention that in the instructions that you may have to do that. And I think the reason for that is so that they're not too loose and just fall right out. You can always make them larger, but you can't make them smaller. Now moving down to the middle of the body, these were a little bit difficult to put in. There's a lot of stringing involved, a lot of hooks, strings wrapping around and looping. Um, but once you get that started, it's really not that difficult. It's just a matter of uh, taking your time and realizing that there's a lot of in intricate details that have to be paid attention to to make it work. Okay, now the leg armor, that was a whole different story. The thigh armor went on okay, it was a little bit tight, and if you're familiar with the TB League bodies, they are very squishy and flexible silicone, so trying to move something over it is a little bit difficult. It can, it can kind of bunch up and get stuck, and that's what happened a little bit here, but mostly on the shin guards. They were very difficult to get on, and if you didn't get them all the way up just where they needed to be, then the feet would not fit on the bottom. Okay, so I want to mention something real quick as I was assembling this. One little quality control problem. The peg that holds the head onto the ball joint came out of the actual head sculpt. As you can see, it's stuck on there. It's going to have to be glued back inside here. Not a major problem, nothing that I would send it back for, but it is something they should have caught in quality control. And of course I do have to mention one more time about the stability. Currently on the turntable, no stand, wings attached, fully stable. That's impressive. Overall I'm really impressed with this figure, the accessories, the wings are just massive and the engineering they put in to make them stay on the way they do. Very impressive. Now there are some flaws, of course, as I mentioned, the head sculpt, uh, basically quality control, some things that made it through that probably shouldn't have. Other than that, once it's all together, it's all said and done, as you can see, it is one massive, very dramatic figure. Now I have to say, of all the 1-6 characters that I've seen, this is the only one I've ever seen that has such a massive accessory attached to the body and on top of that, is still able to stand up on its own. So that is going to wrap it up for this review of the Lucifer Wings of the Fallen. Go ahead and comment below, let me know what you thought of this figure. Of course, don't forget to subscribe, we're going to have lots of upcoming videos coming really soon. You don't want to miss any of those. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next video.